Hello and welcome back to your daily dose of LOL Esports content where I'm going to cover the two series that took place in the LEC earlier today to figure out who's going to be in the best of fives of LEC winter. Um, so went one and one in those predictions. First we have Mad Lions Koi Vitality. I had Vitality flipping heads winning and Hilly flipped tails. He, he had one of his uh, hilly moments. I think he died 15 times between the two games. Uh, Suppa, 12-6-25, 31% of damage. Frescawi, 14-3-11. Karzi, 5-9-11, 37% of damage in the loss. So, um, game one, an int fast out of hilly. Very aggressive on the set, trying to engage, and then engage, and engage, and... Um, engage again the um mic is farther away than i wanted it to be for this video so if you haven't already turned up your headphones i advise you to do so so uh hilly on set was able to get a 2v2 kill early on alvaro on the nautilus would return that favor sup on the senna very strong in game one um Karzi on the virus strong as well so the bot lane they were the ones making things happen in this one. And Vitality's bot lane were actually up 42 CS at 1530. Uh, Mad Lions Koi up about 2K gold. All of that being on the top side of the rift. Um, now, as the game transpired in the mid to late game, Frescawi on the Talia was the difference maker. Into the Akali, he was just more impactful. He made things happen. I say it all the time about mid laners that pick champions like that. If they are finding opportunities, they will gain advantages in that that was the case. Um, Daglas on the rel in both games, I felt like that kind of limited his impact, um, which wasn't great for Vitality, um, given the case that Carsey, well, Hilly in particular, was just inting his face off, so it just hurt the bot lane duo in general. Um, game two, it was tied at 15 minutes at the end of laning phase. Uh, Photon up 22 CS over Myron, or Mirwin, sorry. Uh, Photon on the action. And Photon and Vethio played great early games. Um, Photon, like, gapping um, Mirwin to the point where he had to recall before even getting one CS on the Jace. Now, in the end, though, he would get the last laugh because he solo killed Photon. Um, Suppa on the virus got a 2v2 kill. He was MVP. Game 2 was a lot slower than Game 1 in terms of making things happen. Um, Vethio on the LeBlanc, finding opportunities to get some kills. But when the game got to the core key parts around objectives, when things were on the line, he was non-existent. It felt like he wasn't really dealing the damage, wasn't as effective. Um, and it was like all that attention that they gave to Vethio became uh, non-existent. Uh, Frescawi on the Kaisa finishes it off with a triple kill. Um, I don't think he did better than Bethio in this one, but at the same time, he, when the game mattered, showed up. Um, and to be honest, that was Mad Lions today, where Vitality, I mean, Photon, I thought, did fine. I mean, the solo death isn't great, but I thought he did fine. Daglas, I mean, I probably shouldn't have even given him crap about his rail performance, a rookie player in a big moment, struggling um, at his age. It is what it is. Um, but there was just... A big diffy here between Mad and Vitality, and and it was the bot lane. Um, I mean, Frez did get the better of Vethio in Game One, but Game Two, I said like it just said the LeBlanc was strong, but then late games after laning phase, it was it was a ghost. So, um, Sapa and Alvaro get 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 it done. Series Two, SK Fanatic. So, um, interesting one because SK would win Game One, and that was the game they had a lead. Um, I mean, sorry, that they were behind. And then in game three, they had a lead and threw it. So, Fnatic went 2-1. Noah, 23, 8, and 23. 36% of damages. He had 1,000 DPM across three games. Humanoid, 10, 10, 26. Had the best KDA. Exekick, 13, 11, 26, 29% of damage in the loss for SK. So, game one, it was clear Fnatic wanted to go to the bot side of the rift and get Noah ahead alongside um, June. Razork on the Vi, very active but irrelevant. Probably the MVP of the entire series when you take it into account. On the Kaysante was strong into Oscar in top lane. But Noah on the Senna, 
simply was getting things done in the mid game after getting all that attention from um, his, his uh, jungler. Now Niski, I felt in games one and two on the Azir was very good. Um, he dove in, he had great shuffles. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I think a lot of people probably are going to forget that and they're going to think of game three and how he wasn't as impactful as you would like in the mid to late game in, in, in terms of um, DPM. Even though, actually, when you look at the DPM, um, the, the damage share from SK, Irrelevant, Niski, and Exekick all had around 800 to 830 DPM. So they were all pretty well, um, you know, even in terms of, in terms of uh, damage for this series. So it wasn't like Niski was, was not there. Um, but at the same time, Game 3 was not as strong as Games 1 and 2. Game 1... He wins as a result of his plays and his shuffles. Um, and I thought really that was the, the difference in, in game one. Now game two, 1430, about a 2K gold lead for Fnatic just under that. 22 CS lead for Razork. Razork in all three games as well as the bot lane of Fnatic having CS leads at the end of laning phase. Um, and that in game two is despite SK going bot lane three times to really try and put Noah and June behind. And it would not matter. As Razork's able to still get two Drakes on the Xin Zhao. Uh, uh, June on the Ash had some actually, actually some really nice arrows even halfway across the Rift. Um, from bot lane to mid lane and things of that nature. His setup was strong. I thought on the Nautilus in game one he also had some good moments. Um, if it wasn't for re-engaging and things like that. They probably could have won game one. Um, irrelevant on the Nar. Beat up on Oscar and pretty good in this one. Um, the 18 CS lead at the end of laning phase just being part of it. I thought Irrelevant had some nice alties in team fights, uh, triple knockups and, and things of that nature that kept SK in it and allowed Exekick to continue to get stronger. Um, but in the end, Noah on the Ezreal, he was a, on a mission in games two and three on the on the Ezreal. Like he was, like honestly, he looked like he could have been in the LCK. He was playing that well. Um, and you know, all year long, you could argue that wasn't the case really. You know, he was kind of playing second fiddle to humanoid who was getting a lot of the team's resources and, um, the damage. So for, for Noah to be strong on the Ezreal to finish off game two was important. Now game three, SK had a lead at 1530, two and a half K all of that on irrelevant who was up 31 CS over Oscar and and you'd argue that you want that to be the case because he's on a rumble he even solo killed Oscar on the Orn but in the end if the game drags out which this one did the Orn is going to find value because it's Orn right that's the trick with the Orn is you pick it and you know that hey if we get to 35 minutes there's gold value in just simply having this champion um, and not only that you can see the dichotomy of of missions for the junglers in um in game three so isma on the rel went bot lane three times got a, a grub spawn rift herald and, and found more ganks in the solo lanes where razork on the vi not so much and because of that razork had a 46 cs lead now you could argue why would you want your vi to have a 46 cs lead i i really don't think you want that per se um, of course, you'd rather have a gold uh, CS lead than not have one. Um, but at the same time, I would have rather Razork had found opportunities. And at the, I mean, I guess they just said, hey, we're going to scale. And then, like I said, the Orn um, would come through for them. So mid-game team fights is on the Rowl strong. Um, SK had a lead for quite a while. And, and then as the game got to the later stages, it went back and forth. Fnatic benefiting from taking two early Drakes. Um, and being able to secure Soul for the second game in a row and Elder. Um, Noah on the Azrael, super strong. Like I said, in game two, he was strong. Game three, even stronger. There are moments where he was like 1v9. Hey, I'm going to keep everybody away from this Elder Pit, for example. Um, as they were waiting for Razork to come back to be able to secure the Drake in a key team fight. Uh, Humanoid on the Corky, raining down damage. He had about 900 DPM, I believe, across these three games as well. So... 80 carry in mid for both sides, very strong. Um, in Fnatic's case, of course, a little more impactful because of the damage by Irrelevant for SK. Um, but at the same time, you know, that's fine because Oscar had value on the Orn. So um, 
They win the late game team fights. You just simply couldn't kill them anymore. And, uh, you know, when you allow Corky to get to that point, it's, it's hard to beat him. So uh, that's it for the two series today. As far as videos going forward, tomorrow there will be a sneak peek for uh, Wednesday. Um, remember, Wednesday I do have class, so I will not have um, those recaps for Wednesday's games Wednesday night. That will be pushed to Thursday. Wednesday's video will either be sneak peek of Thursday's games, or I'll combine that into tomorrow's video and just come up with some random content for Wednesday. I'm still deciding on what I want to do with that. Um, thank you for watching. If you like the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. And hope to see you again tomorrow.